Hello, my name is Milda and this is Blue Pterodactyl. <laughs> so, in today's episode, we are continuing reporting on Nicholas Bullis' case. She's a four to five year old missing woman from a small English village called St. Michael's on Wire in Lancashire. She has disappeared on 27th of January after dropping her two kids to school at 8.40 a.m. She then left her car in the school's parking lot, took her Springer's panel willow and went for a walk down the river, just a couple minutes away from the school. Nicola then met with one of the other dog walkers at 8.47 a.m. They exchanged a couple words and Nicola continued with her walk. At 8.53 a.m. she sent an email to her boss. At 8.59 she texted her friend about organizing a play date for her kids. At 9.01 a.m. she logged into the work conference call. At 9.10 a.m. Nicola was spotted by another dog walker walking in the field next to the river. After the second dog walker seen Nicola, she disappeared into the thin air. Police believe she slipped and fell in into the river. At 9.33 a.m., a witness found the dog's harness on the grass between the bench and the river's edge, along with the phone, Nicola's mobile phone, still connected to work call chat room as the call has finished at 9.30 a.m. However, she never logged off. The first person to stumble across the dog and phone initially tied the pet to the bench and message a family member asking if they know who it belonged to. When they were told that they believed that the dog and the phone belonged to Mrs. Bully, they contacted the local primary school where her children attend um, at around 10.50 a.m. and then the school notified Mr. Ansel, this Nicholas partner. Now, lots of people questioning and speculating why did they contact the school, why didn't they contact Paul um, straight away, Nicholas's uh, partner, why didn't they contact police? Well, it's a small, small village, it's a small community. The person who found the phone and the dog might not know the number for Paul. Um, they knew that the kids attending the school, so they assumed the school gonna have all of the contact. Um, they didn't contact police because obviously they didn't know Nicholas' routine. Maybe it was um, planned or something. Maybe friends or family knew what happened. So that's my explanation. So Paul Ansel, he's a Nicholas partner. Okay, so he was notified by a school that Willow, the dog, was found loose in the field with the harness off and that the phone was found as well. But Nicola was not there. Paul already was quite anxious because Nicola usually comes back home after dropping the kids off to school and after going for a walk down the river with Willow because that's her regular walk. So she comes back home usually about 10 a.m. sometimes after okay so he started worrying that she when, when she wasn't home by 10 20 she wasn't home he tried to call her mobile phone he tried to call her whatsapp no answer but he didn't he was he was a bit paranoid but he was like oh maybe she met a friend maybe something else happened you know so when you start chatting um, so he, but he was just continue going on with his day. So he prepared his gym clothes and he was gonna go to the gym. Uh, but before that, he was just gonna pop down the field uh, to check where Nicola is and if she's stuck somewhere or something happened. But then he received a call from school. And the anxiety just hit him. So he he got in his car and he he drove straight to the field where the where the willow was found the dog but on the way he already called police okay he called nine 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 
the SUK number for police. And police basically told him to get back home because they're gonna come to his address and they need someone to be home. The police force has been focusing its attention on the crucial 10 minutes window between 9.10 and 9.20 a.m. So 9.10 when she was, when Nicola was last seen on the upper field and 9.20 when the phone record showed the phone was on the bench, okay? And police appealed to more than 700 drivers for information and claims to have around 500 active lines of inquiry. They have 40-ish detectives working on this case. Um, they are checking out every lead, every tip. So they are doing the best. And for UK, this is like massive. Usually police doesn't do anything. So before we start diving deeper, don't forget to press the subscribe button to join our Dino crew to reach the wider audience. More people know about cases like this, there is a bigger chance someone might know something. SGI Specialist Group International, that are a specialist rescue and underwater search team, joined the search free of charge. After days of charge with special sonar equipment that can pick up smaller sticks underwater, the divers group called off the search, claiming they are 100% confident she's not in that stretch of the river they've been searching. And it's literally impossible for her to be drifted out to the sea. And river is not tidal at the place where, assumingly, Nicola fell in, if she fell in. And the river, at the day when she gone missing, 27th of January, it wasn't fast flowing. It was a tiny bit higher than is now, or when they were searching. But it wasn't. It's not. It's not fast fast flowing. It would have taken a long time to move the body, and it would need a lot of water strength. It would need a lot of strong, strong current to move the body. And it was, it just wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. So if she did fall in the river, she would have been either at the place where she did fall in or somewhere around. Okay, she wouldn't have been moved kilometers and kilometers towards the sea. Her body would have been floated by now as well. And someone definitely would have noticed the whole community, whole area is searching, is aware of what happened. So people are extra careful. Nothing has been found. Peter Fowling, the founder of SGI and a forensic expert said, after 25 years of doing this kind of work, after hundreds of cases, I am well and truly baffled. That's what he said. When people drown, they generally go down where they are. And maybe they move, maybe they move a couple of meters, but not, not far. We normally find them within five to 10 meters of where they went down, even after a few days. That's what Peter Fowling said. This is the most baffling case that I've ever worked on. The police have nothing to go on and hear some of his comments. It's a mind boggling one, this one. We're dealing with the unknown here. So we're looking for something that may not be here. The phone was found on the bench, the leads there, and normally she would be found by now. It's, it's a difficult one. It's a very difficult one. Police have done a very thorough dive search and they were here straight away that day when Nicola went in. And normally you would expect to find Nicola at the bottom. It's a bit of a, it's a mind boggling one, this one. Someone said to me today, there's a witness drowning and there's a person they've gone in this river section i'd find them within the hour no problem at all but we're dealing with the unknown here so we're looking for something that may not be here my gut feeling at the moment we're still treating it as nicholas in the river and that's why we're we're here I, mean, I, I know i keep changing my mind but it's like you, you know you I don't know. I wish I knew. Divers will be going back in to, to, to clear a few bits where we can't quite get in with the sonar, absolutely. May or may not be in the river, but no, who will know until we've cleared the river, really. The only sort of evidence we've got here is the phone by the water. That's it. So we're going by a mobile phone and a dog lead. Speaking to the family in the evening, 
face it. I spoke to a long chat with Paul last night and uh, just dealing with Paul last night, yeah. Police now started looking further downstream into the area of the river which become tidal and then goes out towards the sea. Two boats of specialist police teams have been searching in, in the sea at Morcom Bay before heading upstream on either side of the river wire. The UK is full of rivers that are tidal. So the river would, the water would go back into the sea and basically the river would be empty. It would look like a drought. It would be all drained off. And then suddenly the whole water would just go back into, this, into the river and it would look like a river again. So if she was in that area where the river is tidal and then the tide would go off, you could find stuff on the bottom. You would see clothing, accessories, or a body. I don't think the body would have floated into the sea. I just, I just don't think so. And there's, there's also how, how the fuck? If she did fall in, she would have, she, she would have floated from where she fell in. There's not tidal and it's not fast flowing to like 15 kilometers away. It would have, it would need, it would need a lot of time and it would need more time than they are giving to. Police is adamant she's in the river. Uh, but then again, they're saying there's no proof she fell into in the river. Who knows? And I think, I think because when they were first called, they didn't treat this as a crime inquiry. There was no evidence in third part involving. So they didn't cordon off the area. They didn't stop all of the people going into there. They didn't take any fingerprints or any, or they weren't looking at any evidence basically because they thought she just accidentally fell into the river. So now I think it's pretty awkward for them and they can't just be like, oh yeah, actually there is third part involvement, but we can't do anything because we fucked it up. So I think that's a bit of pride thing now, it could be. So officers now confirm they are focusing on the mouth of the river, but Lancashire police suggesting finding Mrs. Bully in the open sea becomes more of a possibility. That's what they say at the moment. Now, talking about the abandoned house that first police said has been searched and later on one of the Nicholas friend said it has not been searched. People started coming from other UK cities and started to take law into their own hands. They got frustrated, they got angry that police is not doing enough, um, so they just started doing it themselves. And at one instant, police needed to be called to disperse people that were trespassing and trying to break in the house. Because yes, it is kind of abandoned house, but it belongs to one of the people in the village. And there are people in the house, okay? Um, we still have no reports of it being th thoroughly searched. There are some gossips, rumors that the owner of the house didn't let the house to be properly searched without a search warrant and obviously police can't really get the search warrant because this is has been treated as a crime investigation now the reason why he wouldn't let police search the house before warrant i think well obviously either he is involved in Nicola's disappearance and she's in the house somehow. But more likely is, considering it's a small village, probably drugs. My opinion, if the reports are true that he refused to let the police search the house, I think, I think there might be some other legal activity happening in the house that are drug related and that is very common in the UK, uh, things like that. So, but who knows, you know, it's just speculations. Now, all of the exits from the riverwalk are covered in CCTVs, except of one that goes to the Garstang Road. 
and police been checking door to door inquiry, they've been checking everyone's rings, cameras and dash footage and they've been asking everyone who has any footage who been driving through the area that day and to have dash cameras to come forward and and give them give them the footage and even if you think it's it's not significant and if you think you can't see anything in the footage still go forward give it to police because you never know what they might find here is the exact clothing nicola was wearing when she disappeared none of this has been found as well yesterday we had an hour-long documentary on nicola on one of the uk tv channels where paul nicola's partner was giving an interview and here's a few snippets from that for me personally and again this is just my opinion i'm personally i'm 100 percent convinced it's not the river people don't just vanish into thin air it's absolutely impossible so something has happened something has happened find out what it is find out what it is my plea now is personally i want every house every garage every outbuilding the land scrutinized i want it all searched i want it all scrutinized every piece of it Anger, utter frustration, confusion, disbelief, surrealism. Nothing feels real. My main focus is, is the children, always has been. So that's my focus that gets me through. Now for me personally, and what I know about body language, Paul came across as angry, frustrated, lost and baffled he said him and family and friends do not believe Nikki is in the river but he didn't elaborate what they think happened and in my opinion he didn't come across as deceitful uh, he's been saying that he wants all of the buildings outbuildings abandoned places to be searched thoroughly and he is not gonna give up the only thing that I found a bit weird is why would you call police straight away even before going to the area yourself? But as I said before, he was already feeling anxious and panicking because Nicola didn't come back home when she usually does. And obviously then he got a call from the school that the dog was found loose, that the phone was found, Nicola no, was being found, maybe he panicked. You know, you never know how you react in the distress situations. Well, we are almost in the third week of search for Nicola Nikibuli, mother of two beautiful little girls. Nicola is a partner, daughter, sister, friend and a mother, and she's missing. But we are not giving up. Everyone still has a hope that maybe she will be found. And at this point, if she's dead or alive, we just need to know what happened. Family and friends need closure. Here's the numbers to call if you do know something. I will put them down in the description as well. And thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to press that subscribe button to join our Dino crew. And bye for now.